Hello everyone and welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this particular episode of SNUSAT Prep, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of the SNUSAT examination, particularly from the subject of mathematics. So let's start, shall we? Here's our first question. Let A, B and C be finite sets. Suppose that N of A is 10, N of B is 15, N of C is 20, and if A intersection B is 8, and if B intersection C is 9, find the possible value of A union B union C, the number of A union B union C. So, how do we solve this question? Well, let's find out what is the actual value of N of A union B union C. Well, N of A union B union C equals n of a plus n of b plus n of c minus n of a intersection b minus, it's not plus, it's minus, minus n of b intersection c minus n of a intersection c plus n of a intersection b intersection c. Now, some of these values are given here. N of A is 10, N of B is 15, N of C is 20, N of A intersection B is 8, N of B intersection C is 9. And we still have N of A intersection C and N of A intersection B intersection C, whose values are not given. 10 plus 15 is 30, 25, 25 plus 20 is 45, 45 minus 17 is 28. So it'll be 28 minus N of A intersection C plus N of A intersection B intersection C. All right. Now, A intersection B is the intersection of sets A and C. And A intersection B intersection C contains elements which intersect all three, all three sets. So therefore, on average, N of A intersection C is going to be greater than or equal to N of A intersection B intersection C. So moving on, so since we know N of A intersection C is greater than or equal to N of A intersection B intersection C, now this means N of A intersection C minus N of A intersection B intersection C is, well, greater than or equal to zero. Now what does that mean? That means that um, when 28 is um, subtracted by A intersection C and, at, and then N of A intersection B intersection C is added to it, um, it does not go back to 28. There's always going to be something lesser than 28. So basically what we get is N of A union B union C is always going to be less than or equal to 28. Now let's find some other uh, quantities. Now N of A union B is what I was gonna write. So let's erase the whole thing and come back to it. N of A union B. Now its value is N of A plus N of B minus N of A intersection B. We know all of these values, it is 10 plus 15 minus 8. 25 minus 8 gives you 17. Similarly, N of B union C is equal to N of B plus N of C minus N of B intersection C, which is equal to, um, well, N of B is 15, N of C is 20, and then it's 9. So 35 minus 9, that gives you 26. 
All right. Now, A union, B union, C is elements that are present in either A or B or C. So that is the largest set you can get out of here. So that set is definitely going to have more elements than the union of A and C. Now, since N of A union B union C is greater than or equal to N of A union C, it means that N of A union B union C is definitely going to be greater than or equal to 17. And N of A union B union C is also going to be definitely greater than or equal to 26. So um, from both of these statements, what we can get is that the least value for the number of elements in A union B union C is 26 and the highest number would be 28. So basically that means um, the number of elements in the set A union B union C can range from 26 to 28. Now that means options A, B and C are incorrect because these are you know, specific values. So the answer that we get is actually option D. It could be any of these. It basically depends on what's the value of a intersection C and A intersection B intersection C, the number of elements that they have. So depending on those two sets, um, the answer of A, the number of elements of A union B union C will change from 26 to 28. So we got a range. That means option D turns out to be the right option. Now let's look at another question. Now this one's from matrices and at first it appears to be difficult. Matrix A is a you know three row matrix, and we're given that A inverse is one by K times adjacent of A, then find the value of K. Now, of course, and at first sight, you would think, oh, we'll have to calculate A inverse as well as the, the adjoint and all that. So by the way, this is not adjacent, this is adjoint. So we'll have to calculate A inverse, then you have to calculate adjoint and all that. So that's uh, that's what initially strikes you. But if you look at the formula for the inverse matrix, which is represented as A inverse, it's actually similar to the original formula for the inverse matrix, which is one by determinant of A times adjoint of A. So basically the K the value of K is basically the determinant of the matrix A. Now, what do you, what, what do you mean by determinant? It's basically um, when we take the top row, um, it's basically a quantity in a matrix that's easier to find than the entire uh, calculation of finding the inverse matrix. So let's, let's find the determinant. Determinant of A is, so in order to do that, we take the top left, um, we, we take the left element in the first row and then we um, hide its row and column and the matrix that results from it is how we do it. So we take three outside and then we block um, minus two, four, one, and zero. So basically the row and column that it has and the remaining elements form a two by two matrix. Um, determinant of that is this multiplied by this and then minus this multiplied by this. So basically that becomes two times one minus one times minus one. And for determinants, um, um, the sign would be positive first, then negative, then positive. Um, so we'll be having a negative already and then minus two. And then when you black out the row and column of minus two, you would get one minus one, zero and one. So basically um, inside the bracket will be one times one minus zero times minus one. Um, finally, this plus four and then inside the bracket, it'll be one times one minus zero times two. So um, three and then inside you have two, my, two plus one and uh, 
minus of minus 2 becomes plus 2. And then it's 1 minus 0, so that's 1. Um, 4, and then 1 minus 0 again, so that's 1. So basically you have 3 times 3, which is 9, plus 2, plus 4. Um, so um, 9 plus 2 plus 4, that turns out to be 15. And if you look at our options, you can see that option B, option C15 is the right answer. So the other options turn out to be incorrect. So this is how we calculate the determinant. For a three row matrix, all you have to do is take the top row and uh, go start from left to right. The leftmost element is has a positive sign. The middle one has a negative sign. The rightmost has a positive sign. And when you take that element and then in, you to open a bracket and then um, the two by two matrix that you get by deleting the row and column that is present for that particular element, you take that matrix and you cross multiply it. So in, uh, so by doing that for all the three elements of the first row, you will find the determinant of a three by three matrix A. And in this particular question, it says A inverses one by K adjoint of A. This is pretty similar to the for actual formula for the inverse of a matrix, A inverse is one by determinant of A times a joint of A. So all we needed to do was find the determinant of A, which when we calculate it turns out to be 15. So option C is the right option. Now let's look at the final question for the day. Two finite sets have M and N elements. The number of subsets on the first set is 112 more than that of the second set. We need to find what is M and N. So, <clears throat> um, Basically, the formula is number of subsets in a set is equal to 2 raised to um, the exponent would be the number of elements in the set. So um, effectively, what the question says is 2 raised to m minus 2 raised to n equals 112. All right. So um, Let's look at 112 and let's factorize it by 2. Um, so that'll be 56. Um, and you factorize that by 2 again, you'll get 28. Factorized by 2, you get 24. I mean, 14. Factorize that by 2, you get 7. And then finally, 7, 1. You know, because 7 is a prime number. Um, so basically, 112 is. 2 to the power 4 times 7. Um, let me just rewrite the 7. Now, how do we represent the left-hand side similar to how we represent the right-hand side? So if you look at it, it's 2 raised to m minus 2 raised to n. Now, we know that 2 raised to m has more subsets than 2 raised to n because their difference gives you a positive number, 112. So what you can do is you can take 2 raised to n outside, and then inside you would get 2 raised to m minus n minus 1. So 2 raised to m divided by 2 raised to n gives you 2 raised to m minus n, laws of exponents. So basically we have 2 raised to m minus n minus 1 gives you 7. All right? So um, how, did, how can we represent 7 in this particular format? If you look at 7, 7 is 8 minus 1, and 8 is 2 cubed. All right? So we can represent this as 2 cubed minus 1. Now, what's the whole point of getting doing this? From here, we can conclude that the value of n equals 4 and the value of m minus n equals 3. So m minus 4 equals 3. That means m equals 3 plus 4, which is equal to 7. So basically, the value of m is 7. And the value of b, I mean, the value of m is 7. And the value of n is 4. So therefore, the right option would be option b. 7, 4. Option A has the same numbers, but they're inverted. So that means uh, 2 raised to n would be less than 2 raised to n, which is incorrect. 
and options C and D would not work because you know if they had the same exponent and you subtract them together the final product the final answer would be zero the final difference would be zero there would be no difference so therefore the right answer is option B seven comma four so basically number of subset is two raised to number of elements in a set and uh, basically in order to solve this question you had to prime factorize 112 and you get 2 raised to 4 times 7 we can convert 7 to 2 cubed minus 1 and converting the left hand side into a similar manner um, in the form of powers of 2 also helps us out with um, finding out the values of m and n so that concludes this particular episode of SNUSAP prep we hope you found this episode interesting for more of our useful and interesting content don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to watch more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to press the bell icon below the video. That will give you more notifications from our channel. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert. Ta-ta for now.